The Holy Gospel today is found in John, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Now I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father, Jesus said. If God were your father, you would love me. For I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace be to each of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is indeed the Christ, the anointed one of God. And let us pray. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day that you have given to us. It is indeed another day that you have made, and we rejoice in it. We thank you that you have gathered us here to this place to worship you. You are worthy of all honor and glory and praise. We thank you now for this time where we can listen now to the proclamation of your word. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give us not only ears to hear, but we pray that you might grant us understanding as well. Holy Spirit, touch us and move us to understand this word. And so we ask you, come, Holy Spirit. Be our teacher. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we continue with John chapter 8. I think it is our third week in this particular chapter. And uh, the text starts out to the Jews who had believed him. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And so we, of course, have to ask the question, well, who were these Jews who believed him? Well, we are in the latter parts of this particular chapter, chapter 8 of John's Gospel. And uh, Jesus has been in Jerusalem, and he has been um, teaching the people in the temple. And uh, he has come up against opposition by the Pharisees. And they are not believing what he has to say. And even though they are not believing what he has to say to them, we are told in chapter 8, verse 30, that Many, however, did believe in him, did put their faith in him. 
So to these people who were putting their faith in Jesus, he now turns his attention to them. And he begins to speak directly to them, which is who he is talking to when he says, if you hold to my teaching, then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. What is it that Jesus is telling them? Well, first off, if you hold to my teaching, then you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That is a conditional statement. And whether we like it or not, there are conditions for discipleship in the scriptures. We like to think that, you know, once we become a believer in Jesus Christ, there is no more, and, and so we can just kind of sit back and relax and take life easy and coast our way into heaven. That isn't what the Bible says. Salvation is free. Discipleship takes work. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are truly my disciple. What does it mean if you hold to this teaching? Does it mean that you kind of go... That's it? No. What he is saying is if you remain in this word, if we remain in it, if we keep studying it, if we take it to heart, the more we take it to heart, the more it gets into us, and the more it gets into us, the more we become like Jesus. That's what it's about. Getting to know him on a personal level. He says, if you do this, if you do this, if you remain in my word, if you hold it fast, if you get to know me, you are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So it is a conditional statement. Salvation is free. Discipleship is costly. It takes work. It may not be something that we're used to hearing, but it is nevertheless true. Discipleship, it takes work. In the first century, these words were true. These words are true now in the 21st century. No difference. If we want to be a disciple of Jesus, then we need to hold on to the word, remain the word, be a student of the word, and th let it penetrate us and become a part of us, and then we will know the truth, and the truth will make us free. We know, of course, what Jesus' desire is. Jesus' desire is that, you know, those first disciples, they were commissioned to go and make disciples of all nations. So Jesus' desire is that every single one of us becomes a disciple of his. As I told the kids earlier, what's a disciple? Well, a disciple is a learner, a lifelong learner, someone who studies the truths of God for a lifetime. In fact, I am convinced that, you know, God is so great that eternity is not going to be long enough for us to actually get to know him as well as he can be known. There's so much to our God that it just, you know, it's just too much for us. So he gives us what we can handle a little bit at a time. But the more that we learn, the more we grow. And the more we grow, the more we can learn. And so he is wanting us to get to know him more and more and more, but he will not dump it all on us at one time. It's just like, you know, we've got some, you know, little children here today. Okay, we've got three uh, third graders, but we've got one who's not in school, a couple who are not, not in school yet. Well, when they get to pre-K, you don't give them Britannica. You know, one, they don't know how to read, and two, they just rip it apart anyway. Get out the colors. <laughs> Probably draw all over the pictures that are in the, in the pages. No, God is a good God, a good Father. He gives us what we can handle. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, more than you can now bear. But when he, Holy Spirit, comes, he will lead you into all truth. And, of course, the Holy Spirit knows where we all are, and every single one of us, if you drew a line, we'd all be in different places on this faith line. But we're, you know, so long as we're all moving forward, that's what God wants, moving forward as we get to know him and get into a better relationship with him. 
Okay, some of us can be slow learners. People are pointing to themselves going, that would be me. Please know in Matthew chapter 28, it does not say, go and make church members of all nations. It doesn't say that. And what has the church, by and large, have done in the world? Made church members. You know, for some people, it's as easy as meet three hours with the pastor and you're in. Just give us your money and you're go, okay. Man, that is not what Jesus says. He says, be a disciple. In the first century and all the centuries in between, in the 21st century and beyond, Jesus is looking for disciples. Why is that? Because he does want us to become like him. Now, as we become like him, then we can be like him in the world. And what did he do? Well, he healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out devils, cleansed lepers, made the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the mute to speak. He did the work of God. It was the kingdom of heaven now in the earth. And of course, there is no sickness. There is no death. There are no devils in heaven. And so as we become like him, then we can exercise the authority he has given to us on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for people who will imitate him. He's looking for people who can be molded into his image. But to do that, we have to remain not only in this written word, but we also need to remain in him, the spoken incarnate word. We've got to get to know him. That's the only way this happens. But Jesus says something else in this particular first passage. He says in this conditional statement, if you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Then you will know the truth. Huh. Well, that isn't where these people who are listening to him went. They went all the way to the last word that says you will be set free. They said, we are already free. Aren't we children of Abraham? In other words, they were thinking about physical freedom. Jesus, like he does so often in John's gospel, he's on the spiritual topic. He's on a spiritual plane, not on the physical plane. He's inviting them up to talk on his level. The freedom he is inviting them into is a freedom that is a spiritual freedom. And they give themselves away when they say, we're Abraham's descendants, we've never been slaves of anyone. How can you say you're going to set us free? First off, that was a big fat lie. These people had been slaves. Weren't they slaves in Egypt for 400 years? Hadn't they been, they been taken into captivity by the Assyrians and then by the Babylonians? And even now when they're talking to Jesus face to face, they're not free. They're living under Roman occupation. That's not freedom. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about spiritual freedom. And so Jesus makes it really, really plain. He says, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins as a slave of sin. Ooh. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Does he really mean that? Yeah, he really does. That we can be held in bondage and held in captivity and be slaves to sin. In other words, everyone who sins is not free. He's talking spiritual bondage spiritual captivity, spiritual enslavement. But now listen to what he says. He says, now a slave has no permanent place in the household, but a son belongs to the household forever. Listen to what he says. He is telling us, he was telling them, he's telling you and I now, that the desire of the father's heart is for sons. He wants children. He wants heirs. He doesn't want servants and he doesn't want slaves. He's looking for children. 
And specifically, you know, he calls us sons, believers' sons. Now, in the Bible, you know, we, we tend to get bent out of shape about gender and all this sort of stuff. That's not what he's talking about. A son is a son is a son. It's a child of God. And when, you know, we get to talking about the bride of Christ, well, that includes men and women too. So God doesn't think on our terms. So he says, the slaves don't belong to forever. They don't have a permanent place in the household. The slave isn't going to get an inheritance, but a son will. So he's looking for sons. He wants us to have a permanent place in his household, one that doesn't end. And so he says, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Well, now, how does the son do that? He does that by applying the word again. Applying the word, letting the word be what it needs to be in our lives. Applying it to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Apply, apply, apply this word. Let it get in, let it soak in, let it touch our lives and, and let the Holy Spirit work on it and transform us. That's what he's looking for, this word applied. Then he goes on to say, if you hold to my teaching." This is what's going to happen. So the Father's desire is to set us free. The Father's desire is for us to be sons. And the Father's desire is to give us an inheritance. The Father wants us to be disciples of the Son. Now, here's the thing. We look at this and we think to ourselves, well, this is an impossibility. For us, it is. For God, it is not. That's the Holy Spirit's job, is to take this word and use it to mold and shape and fashion us. And of course, he does that a little bit at a time because we can't handle it all at once. But what God begins at baptism, he continues through a lifelong process of renewal and recreation and rejuvenation. So the longer we live on earth, the more we should be becoming like Jesus. That's what God is looking for as we grow in the faith. So do we want to be free spiritually? My goodness, I hope so. I hope we would want to become like Jesus. I would hope that we would want to do the work that Jesus would have us do. Now these Jews... One of the things that they keep doing in this particular passage, they keep going on to their fallback position. And their fallback position is, we are children of Abraham. In other words, we're physically descended from Abraham, therefore we are in like Flynn. And Jesus says, no. No. It isn't the physical relationship that counts. It's the spiritual relationship. He says, you're not being like Abraham. Abraham believed the word of the Lord. The Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. These people had the one that was promised, the seed of Abraham that was promised, standing right in front of them, and they not only were not believing him, they were plotting to kill him. And so he says, you are not a child of Abraham because if you were a child of Abraham, you would love me. Instead, you're planning to kill me. He says, you are not a child of Abraham. In fact, you're a child, not of the father either. You're a child of the devil. No. That's an oucher. But you know, sometimes just to really drive on a point, you really have to tell the truth just the way the truth needs to be told. He loves these people. He wants them to be saved. He wants them to become, they come to a knowledge of the truth. He wants them to be set spiritually free. He does not want them, depending upon the flesh, you know, the, the being the descendant of Abraham, he wants them to depend on him. And that right now is not what they're doing. So he's just telling them flat out, hey, if you were Abraham's descendants, you would love me. But as it is, you are of your father the devil. And he was a liar from the beginning. He is a liar now, and everything that he says is not the truth. You know, that did not win Jesus any 
points with these people. The truth rarely wins points unless you're really looking for the truth. If you're not looking for the truth, the truth will offend, and these people got offended. And so he just tells them, he says, the reason you do not hear what I'm saying is because you do not belong to God. He was trying to get them to think about where they really did belong in relationship with God. The question, of course, in our, you know, is where are we in all of this? Do we realize that nobody is born a Christian? Nobody is born a Christian. Christians are made, not born. And so it is that we have to go through this learning process too. We have to go through the waters of baptism. We have to be reborn from on high. We have to hold to this teaching. We have to let it get into our hearts and minds and lives so that it does its work in us. The question, of course, is, is will we let it? The conditions for us growing in faith belong to us as much as it did in that first century. Will we take those conditions and let them work in us? Do we want to be a free person, a free son of God, or a slave? Do we want to be a disciple? I pray we will. Do we want to be a child of God or a child of the devil? There isn't any gray zone. In God's economy, it's black and white. You see, the choice is ours. And I, of course, pray that we would choose the freedom that God gives to us and to stay in the word and to grow in the word that he has given us. That we would choose to be disciples, lifelong learners that we would choose to grow in the freedom that we have been given, that we would choose to grow in what it means to be a child of God. It's all for us. It's all for us. He's not going to withhold any good thing from us. The question, of course, is will we grab onto it and make it our own? We know that that's the Father's heart. Will it be our heart as well? I pray it will be. Amen.